Welcome, Internet, to the Pixel Play Podcast, your weekly podcast where we get together to just talk about random things that we want to talk about. This week's episode, Adam is bringing you an untimely review for Not for Safe, Not for Broadcast. I'm bringing you an untimely review for Tunic, and Chris brings nothing to the table but his good looks and chiseled jaw. We're also going to be looking at the top 50 games according to uh, ForTheWin.USA.Today.com and see if we can guess what are going to be the top 10 games uh, that they list. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. First, I want to know, gentlemen, how are you guys doing? What are you guys playing? What's new in your world? I'm fantastic. Uh, I'd like to first point out, as per last week's episode, the Christmas tree is in fact gone. I did remove it, and now there is a very sad little table-like thing there that I didn't know what to do with, so now it sits there with nothing on it. Yeah, you we'll should, figure you something out. the lights around the table. <laughs> it's too, it's, it's the like tree. this big. It's just, it's too small. It's very cool because it's like a tree stump piece. Like if you cut just like a piece out of a tree and then sealed it and made a little shiny and put some legs on it, like it's cool. I've never known what to do with this thing, so now it's just sitting there. It's like there was a tree, now there's a dead tree table. And it's the placeholder uh, for the tree? Yeah, I guess it's just a placeholder. I'll put some lights or something on it. I don't know. It needs something more fun. Um, <laughs> but I've been playing um, Triangle Strategy. Uh, oh, yeah. Tactical RPG. I think it's a tactical RPG or strategy RPG. I can't remember which one it's called. I'm addicted to it. I've only had it. been playing for like a week and a bit. I bought it over Boxing Day on Steam. I was playing it on the Steam Deck. And I'm like 35 hours in, which is a lot for how much time I've actually had to a game. It's basically all my waking hours have been playing it. Um, it is basically an old school pixelated game where it's about kingdoms and they're fighting over salt because it's like an essence that's needed for life, obviously. But there's one country that has the only salt like lake that exists in the world and all this other stuff. Basically, if you took... Japanese writing for these JRPGs and you put it into a pixelated modern game but basically gave it an epic story of like Game of Thrones level that is what this is it is so good it's ridiculous hmm. it's it's insane it has the like you know cringy dialogue being in a JRPG and everything like that but the actual story behind it and then the like twists and turns where one nation is going against another nation and you're like this one house in the middle of one of the nations, but you're kind of tied to all of them. Epic. I highly suggest anybody who likes those type of games to play it. Highly. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely it's definitely another one of those things on Switch that I want to get around to at some point, but it also gets lost in the 10,000 other things that I probably should be playing for Switch. I mean, I don't know if I mentioned on the show already, I actually gave Breath of the Wild a shot, and I'm not going to lie, I think it's also the open-worldness of it, but I don't think it's that interesting, to be honest. I think if you remember one of our first episodes, we did like hot takes and I said, Breath of the Wild is drastically overrated. And car it's get carried mostly because of a Legend of Zelda title. Yeah, that one's a tough one for sure. Legend well, I mean, Breath look, of the if, Wild. If you are a big fan oh, yeah. of that style of game, or if you're a Nintendo only player and you don't get a lot of these games, then that was probably huge for you. But for us who have played God of War, Horizon, and all of these many other games that are just the exact same way, it's just another game of here's a gigantic map with not a lot in it. Go have, go find something to do. And after it's, about, no. I just got the, uh, the, um, the parachute thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I realized how big that map was, I went, this is stupid. And then finally made it to, I guess, uh, Kakariko village. And I realized how long it took me to get there. What little I did on the way and then they went, okay, well, go f hit all these other things now. And I'm like, no, it, no, I, I don't think I want to do that, actually. <laughs> if yeah, I, I want to play a gigantic map, I'll go reboot up Valhalla and see if I want to do a couple more Viking raids with that, I guess. It has I would say it's better than too. Valhalla. Mm, <laughs> not by much. There's no, my no, no. take. Not by much. <laughs> it's, I uh, think I, they're, they're, yeah. they've got the same problem. They, they both have similar problems in opposite veins. Yeah, Valhalla has too much to do in a massive open world. Breath of the Wild has too little to do in a massive open world. Yes. I mean, we've had the yes. conversation so many times before. Maps need to be significantly smaller. Like, I don't think it's that big a deal how big a map is if your map is lifeless. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like, Yakuza Uploaded. does such a great job with it. And, I, and a lot of people make jokes with Yakuza because they reuse the same map a lot of the time. But that's why it's working, because you know where things are. And the map is consistent, so you don't end up spending the entire game going, oh, 
I gotta climb this tower. Oh, here's another random treasure chest somewhere. It's like, no, I need to go to the arcade. I wanna go play me some fucking Sonic the Fighters. I know exactly where I gotta go. You don't even need the map. You just know. If you've played the, all the Yakuza games, by the time you get to like, say, Judgment, you're like, oh yeah, I know exactly where the fucking uh, pawn shop is where I can go buy my weapons and stuff. Like, yeah, you know, you have that shit down pat. It's yeah. comforting using the same map over and over because you actually become familiar with the area. Yeah. Like it actually feels like a home. Maps should just be the size of uh, Hyrule Field in uh, Ocarina of Time. You can like, go I, from one end to the other in like two minutes. I, I want somebody to actually make a proper game in terms of an open world where literally everything in the world is, is traversable. So every building you can go in and it's not a copy paste thing. Like it's like you like, it could be a game where it's just like, you know, a small neighborhood that you live in and it's just doing that, but everything is available. If it's a residential, you can knock on the door. You probably won't get an answer for most of them, but at least it's something active there. And then every single shop or like any sort of like public building, you can just walk in. Like, I want to see somebody actually do that instead of, like, gush about, look how big this city is. I'm going, yeah, but I'm not going to do anything in 98% of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this has been Adam's pitch for House Invader 2023 Simulator. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't sound like a bad idea to me. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, yeah, so for me this week, I finished Tunic, so we're going to be reviewing that this week. Uh, and then I was like, what am I going to play? And I hadn't installed Far Cry yet. So I'm like, hey, I still have Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I booted up Mass Effect 1. Oh, that game does not hold up. Not, nope. It's not unplayable, but oh. I, I it, love it, it but it, it yeah, creeps. that that the the Mako just just it did not age well. I didn't even get that far. I like just got like to the introduction and I'm just like, this is not fun. Like the I don't know. It doesn't hit me, so I'm not gonna be playing it. I'm gonna play Far Cry instead. Is it That's a better a game? No, but I'm gonna have more fun. <laughs> is it a better game? No. <laughs> uh, so guys, I thought for fun this week, what we could do is uh, I pulled up a list from For the Win, which is USA Today's gaming magazine article area. Uh, they had a, they came up with a list back in December of 2022 of the top uh, 100 best video games. Uh, I thought we could go through the top 50, kind of just see what they thought, see if we're still in touch with what the kids are into. Um, but I thought what would make it more fun is if we could guess what we think are going to be the top 10 games of, uh, of the uh, on this list. So how we're going to do it is we each got a list of 10 games from 1 to 10, 1 being the one that I think that is going to be number 1, 10 being the one that's 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the list, see if our, who can get the most correct. So we're going to do, if your list, if your game ends up in the top 10, you get one point. If your game is in the top 10 and you guess the right spot, you're going to get two points. Uh, so we'll go through and just share our list and then we'll go through the entire list and just kind of review it and talk about it as we go through. So I'll go first as this, I'm the one who kind of thought of this game. So for me, here are my top 10 games. Not that I agree are the top 10, but what I think are going to be on for the wins article number 10 fortnite number nine skyrim number eight mass effect 2 uh number seven La uh, legend of zelda or green of time number six elden ring number five halo 2 number four mario 64 number three super mario brothers number two gta 5 and number one tetris oh that's a good list that's a good list a fair bit of different from mine but I don't know. I so, think I like yours more. I'm noting everything I don't know. down. We'll Sorry, you had two Mario games in three and four. Was it was it Mario 64 and four? I Mario think 64 you said? is number four. Super Mario Brothers is number three. Okay, I'm just marking all this down so I can keep track of all of our pointage here. You're just copying my list. I mean, I've, I've, <laughs> yeah. I I got it. I got it. He's not copying the homework. He's just verifying his own against yours. Just copy copy it. Just don't make it look like the like you copied it. <laughs> murio uh, brothers <laughs> adam what is your top 10 list all right so my number 10 is fortnite my number nine is skyrim <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch that's my list uh so i i see i kind of playing the similar game that you did i'm doing a mixture of modern and old games and seeing what sticks because i'm not going for what i think is a top 10 i'm going for what i think like some like usa today would write so that's, that's the, that that's is a much game. more interesting thing to judge. This isn't like IGN or something. This is USA Today. 
So well, to be fair, it's for the win, which is their like yes, it's not, but like it's getting, also USA it's like Today. Getting, they're not getting like their foreign correspondent, and they're like, "Hey, can you make?" A I'm list not of putting video games? Barbie's Horse Adventures on here. Okay, calm down. That's I'm going two. with what somebody who would be hired by a not Chris gaming publisher <laughs> yeah, should, to actually do this. So. All right, Adam, what's your list? All right, so my number 10 is Grand Theft Auto V. My number nine is Minecraft. My number eight Ooh. is Elden Ring. My number seven is The Last of Us. My number six is Metal Gear Solid One. My number five is The Witcher 3. My number four is Pokemon Red and Blue. My number three is Tetris. My number two is Super Mario 3. And my number one is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. That's a good nice. list, too. There's some good ones that on there. That is a good list. Chris, what about you? What'd you get? All right, so my number 10, Metal Gear Solid 1. Number 9, Super Mario Brothers 3, very specific. Uh, 8, Halo 2. Uh, my 7th, Witcher 3. My 6th, Mario Odyssey. My 5th, Final Fantasy 7. 4th, uh, uh, Skyrim. Number 3, Ocarina of Time. Number 2, Super Mario World. And 1, Breath of the Wild. I think that, mm. again, going with what I think people will put, not even close to my list. Okay, so you what was Super Mario two? World? You're... My number two was Super Mario World. Mario World, and I'm missing one. Uh, I think it had, what was between Mario Odyssey and Halo 2? Uh, Witcher 3. Perfect. Okay, got to be on everybody's seven. list here. Okay, so what we'll do, uh, I'm not going to go through each one. I'll, I'll go through, like, we'll do for the first 25, for, like, from 50 to 25, we'll do blankets of five. So I'll do five. I'll read five. We can kind of talk about the order if we yep. have anything to say. And then once we get into 25, we'll go individually, okay? You got Love it. it. So 50, Hollow Knight. 49, XCOM. 48, Deathloop. Next we'll play podcast, Game of the Year 20, 20, 47, Sid Meier's Civilization Four. Number 46, Super Mario 64 and 45 Return of the Obra Dinn. I'm surprised Super Mario 64 is yeah. so far down on this list. That's and I'm my surprise for sure. second guessing some of my guesses as being bad potential choices based on that <laughs> alone. Don't like, get me wrong. I'm surprised to see XCOM in a top 50. I'm cool with that. Yeah, that yeah. surprises me too. But also, and, and I'm not going to say anything bad about it, but like, Return of the Oprah Din being 45. I haven't played it yet. I've heard a lot of good things about it. But above Super Mario 64? Yeah, right? Right? I'm sure I'm like it's bonkers. on my wish list. I'm going to play that game because I've heard so many good things about it. But Mario 64? All right, I guess I'm getting ready to get real triggered for the next 45 picks here. I I really thought like at least Mario 64 would be in the top 25. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised oh, 100%. There. Always Okay, so let's do 44 to 40. Number 44, Hitman 3. Number 43, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Number 42, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. 42, Super Mario Brothers, or sorry, 42 was Sonic and Knuckles. 41 is Super Mario Brothers 3. Oh my God. And 40 is Near Automata. <laughs> what? This person, what is this person doing? This is like, okay. So I'm traumatized. I, look, I'm, that, I'm the... trying not to get hurt, but this is like me as a guitarist when Rolling Stone did their top 100 guitarists of all time and they put Jack White in like the top 25 or something. So like, look, it's their list. It's wrong, but it's their list. <laughs> no one can tell you your opinion is wrong, but it's definitely not right. <laughs> How but is... Yeah. I'm I'm guessing that whoever wrote this list is under the age of 25. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm surprised. It's an like, intern. Hitman Three, like that's not a bad choice. Like Hitman Three was a really good game. It's a good like, sleeper. It's that... But remember, yeah. that's now above Mario 64 still. <laughs> right. Anything right. you list at that point, keep in mind, is above Mario 64. Yeah. Who is Sonic Three and Knuckles and Mario Brothers? What the heck? All right, I'm just. Yeah, like I'm surprised. My shrine Sonic. over here is so upset. Sonic so. 3 and Knuckles <laughs> is above Mario 64. There's going to be one game in this next 40 that we're all going to go, why? Okay, so we'll do 40 to 35. 40 yep. is near Automata. 39, Heroes of Might and Magic 3. 38, Elden Ring. 
37, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. <laughs> and 36 is Stardew Valley. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I think Stardew Valley deserves that spot. Where that's Stardew good. Valley is exactly where it needs yeah. to be. Like, yeah. Stardew Valley okay, is this person spot. is 21 years old. At most. <laughs> This person's still after. breastfeeding. I'm not like, judging. There's still, there's still all good games they're listing, but this order is very questionable. So I think, like, I put Elden Ring in, in my top 10, thinking that would be a safe bet. But, like, I feel like 38's a good spot for Elden Ring. Like, it's Oh, yeah, good. for it's, sure. Yeah. But we're, we yeah, were thinking, no we're all, with. like, you and me were both thinking the same thing. It's like, it's recency bias. Someone's going to put it yeah. in the top 10. Stardew Valley's in a good spot. Ocarina of Time is way too low at 37. Like, I could see... I can see an argument for Legend of Zelda above Mario 64. No problem there. 100%. Yeah. I still will but, say, like, I actually don't hate the positioning because I do think Ocarina of Time is given a little too much credit. But at the same time, it's not the placement that I hate. It's, again, the games that I'm hearing above it. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, it's like, they're probably above. Be Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Now, granted, yeah, this, how, this is always how? the challenge. We'll probably talk about this throughout this list, too. It's hard to differentiate games that have 20 plus years of time in the ether compared to some that have five. So who knows? Yeah. Like, like Stardew Valley may be like a top 15 game of all time, top 10, maybe even by the time that things go over, just because of like how it settles over the years compared to others, which is maybe what was being taken into consideration with this list, too. So That's it's, fair. Cause I mean, there, like there's a bit of nostalgia bias, I guess, as well from us. But at the same time, too, like, I don't know. So, some of them are just like, mm. well, I think I've talked about this before on the episode, like the, the idea that gaming is an iterative medium and that, you know, what, what is running today is only running because of what walked yesterday. And it doesn't necessarily hold up. It's not, it's not like movies or something like that, where, I mean, even movies, a certain aspect, like they get better with time in terms of like graphics and stuff, but you could watch a movie. You can watch star Wars from like 1970, whatever. And it is still holds up today, but I, I would argue that in the same length, like it'll get to a point where Legend of Zelda is just going to be so like, it's not going to control the same because things have iterated so much from there. I think it yeah. depends on the console. I think, and we've said this before, Super Nintendo seems to have a better aging process than say N64. Mm -hmm. So I think like some of the older, Mar like I think Link to the Past or Mario World or even just like the first three Mario games, technically it's two because we never really got the proper two, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> but like those have all aged well because they control kind of what an indie game would today. So they don't they don't feel nearly as janked as say like, you know, like a Super Mario 64 does now. It still controls actually pretty decently for its time. But mm -hmm. like if you compare it to say a Mario Odyssey, it's not even fucking close. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Polygons definitely didn't age as well as Pixels at all. But then again, when we were talking Super Nintendo, that was like the final Pixel console, right? Like, they learned from Atari and everything before it to get to the Super Nintendo. Yeah. N64 and PS1 were the start of 3D Polygon, so it was like Tomb Raider, right? And it's just like, is, when you look at it, that's what you it's get. It's a conversation <laughs> for another day, too, but hopefully yeah. that with what we've gotten in the last, like, few years that we start realizing that okay, we've hit the pinnacle now. Now let's work on the experiences, kind of like how Super Nintendo really transformed the industry with just how many just memorable and, like, king of all time, like, level games that we have now. Polygons were just gaming's awkward teenage phase. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, let's do 35 to 30. Uh, one I like to see up here, 35, Age of Empires 2. Amazing game. Mm -hmm. Number four. God damn it, this is going to hurt. GTA 5 is number 34. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> the PS5 release specifically. <laughs> GTA 5 is on three separate times. My list is just eroding, guys. It's just eroding. Uh, 33 is Faster Than Light. FTL Faster Than Light. Uh, 32 is Dishonored 2, which I think Deathloop is better than Dishonored 2, personally. And number 31 is Metal Gear Solid 5. Okay 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 any, I'm, any I'm, thoughts comments anything we need to change there i'm not offended by anything on that list and actually i think ftl is to this day still one of the best indie studio games of all time my oh opinion. ftl is a fantastic game i've dropped so many hours into that it's ridiculous i've never played that one. Oh, it's good all right yeah, it's it's pro it's probably one of the best roguelikes out there too awesome 
All right, last of the bulk, and then we're going to get individuals. Uh, 30, Dragon Age Origins. 29, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. 28, Super Smash Bros. Melee. 27, League of Legends. 26, Mass Effect 2. You're literally just getting rid of everything on my list. <laughs> this okay. is... Adam, you've got thoughts. Can I, can I talk about my paranoia right now? <laughs> sure. We are at 25. Yep. I have not heard a Final Fantasy game yet, and Xenoblade just made a list. I'm getting <laughs> really freaked out right now, based it's on this 20, list, that a Final Fantasy gonna... game, or even Chrono Trigger, might not be on this list. I'm getting a little top... fucking paranoid as a JRPG user. Top 10 is just going to be Final Fantasy all across the board. I guarantee you it fucking won't on this list. There is n no... Okay, can I, can I get an extra point if I place a bet... Or actually, you know what? I'll lose a point if I'm also wrong on this. Okay. It, can I lose? Can I bet a point that there's going to be no Final Fantasy games in the top 10? Sure. Okay, dude. Okay, okay. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. <laughs> and, if, and if I'm wrong, I lose a point altogether. Yeah. I had Final Fantasy and then I took it off there. So we'll see. All right. Uh, let's do number 25. 25, Dark Souls. Yeah. I'm, I'm I feel okay like Elden Ring probably Elden Ring should probably be higher than Dark Souls. I, think. I feel like it should. It probably yeah. will be over time. I think Dark Souls is still being looked at also from its value for what it did. So that's probably a part of it. Yeah. Could be. 24. Half Life Half Life Alex. Half Life Alex, the VR yeah. game. Wow. Yeah. Arguably, well, it's probably it's arguably the best VR game that's out there on the market right now. So again, if it changes the industry the way that it might, then I, I can kind of get it. Although, but then Mario sixty four is at like forty eight, <laughs> and well, that's the thing. I'm starting to like try. I'm trying to figure out like what their criteria was here. I'm wondering like if they were going for more like industry value at this point. But yeah, then I once again. Mario 64 is at 48. I pretty much, I think that that pretty much spearheaded the entire future of like 3D games. It's like that, and I think Grand Theft Auto 3. Well, I guess right. we're not working with too much logic here, but hey, that's part of the game. 23 is Doom 2016. I think that's a good spot for Doom 2016. Yeah, I'd give that. Yeah. I mean, um, if the other Doom isn't, then I would disagree, but you know. I think Doom 2016 is better than Doom Immortal or whatever it is. See, it's funny because I actually did not like playing the playing the 2016 one. You've got That's, the stupid what are like the what are the guys in Doom Eternal where they've got like the act like those guys are so BS that it just ruined the game for me. I think oh, it might have yeah. just been like I I can't play the super fast paced ones anymore in the same way that I can't play Call of Duty multiplayer anymore. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, you're getting right. old. Are you guys ready for 22? <laughs> no. <Very. laughs> Alien Isolation is 22. <laughs> Good game, but I didn't expect that <laughs> to be almost yeah. top 20. Okay, this person is 18. 21 is Red Dead Redemption 2. That's not an arguable one. Yeah. Eh, I, I liked it, but I felt like it went too much for realism. Like, I'm going to open a cupboard and then press for each individual item was kind of stupid. Oh, uh, yes. 20 is StarCraft 2. Totally think that's a good okay. spot for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 19 is Tetris. Wow. Oh I am oh so boy. screwed on this one. <laughs> this person hate this person hates history. <laughs> uh 18. Final Fantasy 7. Hey, we okay. got one! But it's what? not in the top 10 yet. My bet's still fine. <laughs> My list is just there's nothing oh. left. There are, like I've got three games left on mine, Chris. Don't <laughs> worry. Number 17, Hades. Okay. It's a really good game. Like, I don't know if I would put it above, like, some of the other ones that we've read, but, like... Like Super Mario sure. 64? <laughs> yeah. Operative Time, Sonic Operative 3. Times. Super <laughs> Mario 3. <laughs> what the... F Tetris. Uh, the, the, the old men yell Mass a cloud two. meme is happening very strongly right <laughs> yeah, now. It's happening right very now. much so. Very much so. Uh, 16 is Resident Evil 2 Remake. Okay, like, I guess, okay. you know... I see an argument for Resident Evil 2 and like the remake's better, so why not? I'm starting to get a yeah. sense that this person really likes horror games. <laughs> Number 15, It Takes Two. Wow, wasn't expecting That's that. That's a one. game, honestly, yeah. I, th I think will age very well when oh, time yeah. goes on because it is one I of the best so. casually co op experiences I think I've ever played. 
but it's not the best one. Like if I was gonna put a couch co-op on there, like I think Overcooked is a better couch oh, co-op. Overcooked. Like, well, I think in terms of like a story, like story driven too. Like Overcooked is just fun, but like I think it, it takes two is is a really amazing experience. See, I played it with Jen, and we played it for a bit, and like the story was not what grabbed us. Like it was kind of, and like the story was actually the worst part of it in terms of like you had these two annoying like adults going through divorce, and just both were insufferable. It was the gameplay that carried it, but like. <laughs> The story kind of sucked and was cheesy and stuff. Anyways, number fourteen, Celeste. Mm-hmm. I've not played it, but like I feel like from what I've heard, like it's, it's fantastic. It is a fantastic game. Yeah, it like, definitely like the deserves to be in this be list. Like, not that any of these games are bad. It's just the order. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number thirteen is God of War. Um, I'm trying. I'm to assuming see the here. remake. Yeah, probably 20. I'm reading the, the scripture right now. Yeah, it is the reboot, and I okay. think 13 is a good spot for it to be right there. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, like I can see top 10, but I like they're close enough that I'm like okay, like because what you got to think about what God of War did, God of War 2018, like it literally took the most cheesy 17 year old like misogynistic version of like what you could do. It's like literally he's just ripping things. And like hanging out in orgies, like that's pretty much what he's doing the whole time. And they made and, him a dad. And they made it like, think about it. Like, God of War would not resonate as it is now if they just kept it the way it was. Like, it was kind of like, I'm not gonna say it was bad. Like, it was good at the time, but like, everyone kind of outgrew Kratos. And I think if they had stuck with it, it would like we all would have moved past it. They literally oh, yeah. just had Kratos grow up, and now like a bunch of guys in their 30s are like, I can relate with Kratos to a certain extent. Like sure i'm not a god or anything but like i mean i'm projecting a little bit because i'm a, I'm a dad and it came out right around the same time but they like, carried over perfectly for the way that the audience aged with the game exactly like i think there's something that has to be said like it's a great game great story but just the genius of taking like it was such a huge risk to do what they did with god of war and it totally landed oh yeah, oh, yeah. uh number 12 disco elysium i oh, fine. really need to play that game me too it's, I've, it's I've one of those games so many that, like, good things. I'm annoyed at myself that I don't play it. See, it's overwhel- It's like overwhelming for me, like that game that I'm just like, I'm not going to get into it. Like I've heard it's like a 70 hour game. That's like really intense. And I'm See, just that like, doesn't stop me. <laughs> I'm playing Persona 4 Golden right now for the third time. Fair enough. All right. Number 11, Persona 5. Ooh. Okay, I, my bet is almost ironclad at this point. There is no Final Fantasy on this on this top ten. I am so fucking sure of it now. <laughs> All, right, All right, I better get the list ready to start rocking top points. 10? Yeah, here we go. Number ten, Bloodborne. Okay, so nobody had that. <laughs> nope. Once again, like I feel like, sure it's good, but I I put Elden Ring above it for like a FromSoft game. Hmm. Number nine, Resident Evil Four. I don't hate the pick. I just hate I the don't, order. Yeah. <laughs> Number eight, Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. What? What? That's so specific. And <laughs> what the frig? All right. Okay, this person is fourteen. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> it's such a specific Pokemon that's not like the original or the most recent. It was just yeah. like their favorite one that they played at some point because yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were just like, "What's my favorite? Po- I got to put Pokemon on here. What's my favorite one?" Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. All right. All right. So Adam, we've got three for- picks in of the top ten, and not one of us even has a fucking point yet. I think except, you're on the board except now, for my Adam. bonus point at this point is still working. <laughs> I think I think you got a point now, Adam. Minecraft is number seven. Oh. See that I agree with. Damn it! I almost had I almost had it in in the right spot too. Yeah. Number six, Skyrim. Oh, Oh, I'm on the board. I'm on the board too. Wrong spot, but on the board. Yeah. I feel like Skyrim at six is is an okay spot. Like I had it at nine, but I think six is acceptable. Yeah. Number five. Oh my God! Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. I got a point. (laughs) Did you put Breath of the Wild? Yeah, 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 I put it, put it as, as number, number one. Ah, uh, okay. Number four, The Witcher. Damn, I was one spot Which off. Which Witcher? Three? Witcher three, yes. Okay, Witcher three. it's the original. I was one like, spot yeah. off. No. Damn it. Yeah, Witcher three. Uh, number three, Metal Gear Solid. Yes! 
Another point. Okay. Hang on, hang on. All right. Number two, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Okay. That's not a bad pick. That's not but a bad number pick. Two number two is an interesting one. That's that's a hot take. That's a hot take for it being number two for sure. Right. All right. We got our things locked in. Based on what we've seen from this person, what do we think number one is? Well, it's not. Come on, X, Y. Okay, let, let's have some fun here. Here's what's left on our list that you haven't said. On my list, it's Pokemon Red and Blue. And The Last of Us, I think, is all I have left. Halen, mm -hmm. you have Halo 2, and that's it. Oh, and Fortnite. But Ford, if Fortnite is number one, I'm hanging up right now. <laughs> uh, and Chris, there you know, we you still have a show Mario to do. Mario World and Halo 2. So, yeah, we have Halo 2, Mario World uh last of us and pokemon red and blue is all that's left out of all of our lists for this last pick so we have four shots at it so i guarantee you I we know. got so, nothing right no i don't think we cast it so like let's put our heads together let's kind of profile this person i'm gonna figure out what their name is let's profile not, not in that way but like let's think about this person and and what they would have chosen this is by the way oh no i've broken it Lear, guys fill the air it's gonna oh, be God. something like Silent Hill, or I can see it being. No, no, Silent no. That's Hill. that. That's that's too horror. They remember it's specifically two remake and four, so there's no way it's gonna be seven or eight. Two remake, four Castlevania. Like they seem to like like horror games. Horror games seem to be pretty high on oh, the list. I've got my. I think it's gonna be something like Dead Cells. It's gonna be Dead Cells would like, be a good option. Yeah, I think it's gonna be something like that. That's that's what I'm, I'm gonna say. I'm trying to think of what they've done. They've did they've done a bit of independent stuff. They've done a bit of horror. They've done a bit of the artsy stuff because they did. They did Obra Din. Oh God! It's gonna be. You know what it's gonna be? It's gonna be. Um, who's the studio that did Returnal? What House Mark? It's gonna be House Mark's. Uh, like the zombie game that they made. It's indie and it's a horror game. At alive Ooh. or something like that. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna go with. Hmm. Ubisoft's Zombie from the Wii. <laughs> zombie U. <laughs> zombie U. <laughs> zombie U. <laughs> yeah, that one. That's what it's gonna be. Based on the kind of writer, I'm gonna take a real stab and go with the artsiest game I can think of that still a lot of people like. And has a little, like, it's not old enough that I think it's out of this person's list, but it's old enough that it carries value. I'm going to go with Shadow of the fucking Colossus. Oh. Okay. Just for context, my thing accidentally loaded on number one, so I'm going to see myself out of this conversation. Okay. <laughs> Chris, do you have any guesses? Or are you going to stick with your zombie you guess? No, <laughs> Dead Cells. I think it's going to be something like Dead Cells. I'm going to stick with my okay. Dead Cells. All right, cool. Surprisingly, Adam, congratulations. It is Shadow of the Colossus. Holy you called fucking it. shit. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. And I got my bonus point. Because <laughs> no, there's no Final Fantasy. Gambling Yo, what pays the off. All right, All right so Adam, I think, I think you got this, but you count it real quick. I'll see if I can figure out who wrote this article. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna say I technically win. Chris and I tied. Kalen only got one point. Both Chris and I got four, but I also guess Shadow of the Colossus, so I'm counting that. Yeah, you you can have it. So technically, if we were going by the games list and not my gambling point, Chris would have won. <laughs> wow, I'm the uh, so smartest video game person ever. <laughs> yeah. I should write right for now. this magazine or website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I don't see it. I don't see a uh, author. I just see like it's got a pen name of like JLHF. I don't know who that is, but your list is terrible. Reconsider what you're doing. <laughs> Look, all top lists are terrible. My list yeah, is terrible. Yeah. Chris's list is terrible. Kalen's list is terrible. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, My shots fired. Flawless. My list is impeccable. Yeah. Number I can one, confirm. Candy Crush. Number two, Pokemon I Go. <laughs> I can confirm to you, sir, that my top 100 games have only the top 100 games of all time. That, wow. All right, my top 10 of We're all trying. time. All right, let's We're go. To know. Number 10, Final Fantasy 10. Number 9, Final Fantasy 9. <laughs> <laughs> it's so convenient that like Square Enix just made it like easy for you to just make that list. 
That doesn't work, because then you're going to put 8 above 9, and I know that's not true. <laughs> Number 8, Mortal Kombat. Wait, shit, 8 was deception. Never mind. <laughs> Just Wait, no, 8's Armageddon. Here. I was wrong. Still, it sucks. Never mind. I tried to go with another 8. That was the closest one I could think of. That is still not even close. Wait, number 8, so Mario Kart 8. All right, we're back in it. <laughs> Mario Kart wasn't even in the top 50. What the hell? Oh, yeah. Number seven, Final Fantasy VII. Number six, Final Fantasy VI. It's still working. Number five, Metal Gear Solid V. Number four, hmm, what's a good four? Apparently Resident Evil 4. <laughs> yeah, I, I would actually go with that if I'm picking a four. Number three, hmm. Metal Gear Solid 3. Number two, Metal Gear Solid 2. Number one, Metal Gear Solid 1. There you go. I'm trying to think of like a good three also, that I've played. Number three, Persona Witcher. three, fuck it. Number two, oh, Witcher three, never mind. Yeah, you just yeah. you gave that to me. Number two, Mass Effect two, and number one, uh, Metal Gear Solid one. I'm trying to be a smart ass. I'm trying really hard to be a smart ass. One piece. I can't. <laughs> I'm so mad that I can't think of a title with one in it. Not the number, but the actual name. I'm trying to think of like a really clever one, and I can't. I'm so disappointed in myself. There's someone who's yelling at their at their speakers right now, like a game title with one in it. There, we've been yelling at our microphones for the last thirty minutes. It, I don't think there's been any shortage of yelling in this. Also, uh, how is it that Assassin's Creed wasn't in the top fifty? Like Assassin's Creed Two is a fantastic game and should definitely yeah. be in the top twenty five. Because yeah. Return uh, so of by the way, Din needed to be in there, Kalen. <laughs> uh, I just took a look. So the article was written by GLHF, and GLHF, I guess, is a aiming content agency serving media partners around the globe with a central team supported by local experts. I don't know, based on the list I really It also to, stands for good luck, have fun. <laughs> All right. Which is like the point of list. that list is to make people <laughs> totally enjoy it. The company provides best in class written and video content to some of the world's biggest publishers. Cool. Whatever. Your list yeah. is terrible. It's okay. Could yeah. be worse. Mario Kart should have been in what? there. There's Top no way. 50 video games of all time. Let's just pull up one other random list to get the 10. Let's see what IGN would have done. Let's see if we can at least like salvage it a little bit by having like a decent 10. The thing, the thing I did is I went with the most recent one I could find because I didn't want to like have oh, yeah. from, like I saw some from the And it paid off because, like, I oh for my God, was that content. <laughs> <laughs> so for the, for I guess like what people would consider the biggest gaming outlet out there, this was their top 10. Number 10, Dark Souls. Number nine, Portal. That's a game that, now that I think about it, I'm surprised wasn't yeah. in that top, top 50. Top 10, yep. Yeah. Uh, number eight, Grand Theft Auto Five. Number seven, Resident Evil 4. Number six, Ocarina of Time. Number five, there's your Halo 2. Number four, there's my boy Mario 64. Number three, Last of Us. Number two, Chris, your Chrono Trigger. And number one, Breath of the Wild. So still wrong on number one, but hey, you know, it's still, I got, it's still I got better number than one right. number 10. I've just been confirmed that I was right. Breath of the Wild, number one. There you go. Congratulations, Chris. You are now qualified to write for IGN. Yes. I mean, the paycheck, I'll take that. <laughs> look, look, it has a little bit in it for everybody. Yeah. So fun fact, I apparently learned cruising through Reddit and the Reddit comments. Apparently there is scientific proof that Tetris, if you play Tetris like shortly after a traumatic event, can help with PTSD or like help minima like mitigate PTSD to a certain extent. Huh. And they say no, apparently games has something do to do with like it takes violence. Games help you after you've dealt with violence. Apparently, what it does is it like tr moves like blood away from like where the PTSD is formed, and it moves it to another part of the brain so it can think. And that's apparently how it helps prevent PTSD. Now, I don't take this as a scientific fact. I'm no scientist, and I'm just going with a Reddit comment. But you can't trust Reddit. Who can you trust? That is uh, true. We, well, clearly, Wikipedia. Yeah, I mean, Wikipedia is just made by a bunch of Reddit nerds. Yeah, as long yeah. as the Wikipedia articles, the citation is a Reddit post. Yeah, that's what's important. <laughs> that's, that's that's how you know way, it's that, true. That's just too way. That's way too much of a loop. <laughs> a death loop. Oh, yep. such a good game. Uh, let's actually pip before we, before we flip. Let's 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 give her a hot take. What's your favorite? What's or sorry? What game do you think is the is the one that should be put at number one of all time? Like not your favorite, but what do you think like actually should be for whatever your criteria is? What do you think is the game that should be number one of all time? 
Mine is Super Mario World. If I had to pick one that I think is timeless, everybody can enjoy, is always enjoyable no matter when you touch it, it's Super Mario World. Galen, he's thinking real I, hard. I, 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 I'd, I'd say probably Portal. I think Portal 2. Mm -hmm. I think Portal 2 is like, it's a great game, has a great fun story, interesting dynamics, anyone can play it, and it has an amazing co-op. So like it kind of, it kind of checks all the boxes. Yeah, I'm I'm in line with Chris on Mario World. The only there are only two other things I would put above it, but it would be for a different criteria in terms of importance. I would put either Tetris or Pong, but that's for a different kind of criteria. Hmm. If I'm talking of like, if you want to like, if at the top of the list it's the game that I think you should show to anybody who is new and getting into gaming, of like this is the best thing that we've ever had in our history. Yeah, Mario World is what I'd probably put in there because I think it's a game that can work in any generation. Yeah, mm. fair enough. I think that's a good choice too. Uh, all right, let's pivot over to the reviews we got. Uh, Adam, would you like to go first and give an untimely review for not for broadcast? Absolutely, I can do that. So, uh, not top fifty game on USA t USA Today's list, but you know, it's it's. I still think it's a very good game. So, not for broadcast is a game that I'm not sure if it's anywhere else, but Steam. I'm not a hundred percent certain on that, but I don't think it's a game that will work on consoles. So let's just assume it's a PC game at this point. Um. It's basically a game about you working in a TV studio. So you're working behind like the switchboard as, as I, I went to school for broadcasting. So uh, this game was actually quite up my alley. Okay. The switchboard in this game is not nearly as fucking complicated as actual switchboards are. Uh, there are about, I don't know, 200 less switches in this game. It's like when you play Guitar Hero, there's five buttons and one thing to flick compared to a guitar, which usually has six strings and 21 frets per so it's a little it's a little extra. I remember how many times I got it's like side story. I don't mean to go off the rails right away, but I remember teaching guitar when I was just out of high school and the amount of kids that I got during the Guitar Hero craze that quit within a couple of months because they didn't realize how fucking hard guitar was going to be was hilarious because they all play Guitar Hero and went, oh, this is easy. I could totally play guitar. And then realizing you do the math, 21 times six, you're looking at what, like 120 That's more than 10. And so you're looking at 120 something buttons to five. <laughs> and that's also, that's a, and chords suck. Like chords suck, especially if you have like small pudgy hands like I do. Why do you think I play bass? Yep. So a lot, a lot of kids learn real quick. They're like, oh, I'm not going to be able to play Dragon Force ever. <laughs> but anyways, going back to not for broadcast. So yeah, you play, I don't know if, I think you haven't, yeah, your name is Alex, I believe. But you, um, you play just like a, you don't ever see your face. You're just a un, un physical. You have no manifestation. You're just playing a character who runs the switchboard for a TV studio. So you're the one that's in charge of setting up the camera angles, making sure the sound goes through. If there's uh, any swearing, you have to censor that. And then they throw like little things later on in the game, like something gets fucked up with the uh, the wavemore monitor, so you start losing the signal. So there's a little thing you got to keep track of. There's other levels in the game where, like, there's a weird one where they have, like, this doll that, like, for, like you know when Furbies, like, everybody thought Furbies were going to suddenly, like, break and start attacking people? That actually Wait, happens that. in this game. There's a doll that ends up going, like, on a rampage and starts, like, so one level they try to take down the radio towers. You have to keep shocking the tower to get them off so the signal doesn't get diluted. And then in another level, one of them gets into your office and it's almost like Five Nights at Freddy's. You having to like push them away so they don't, they don't jump <laughs> on your face. So it's like, it's half just like keeping focus and keeping the show looking like a professional show. And another half of like, mind, like trying to like get rid of all the other shenanigans they're doing on in the background at the same time. And then along with that, they actually tell an intro, like an interesting story that has like, it's a it's a parody, but it also has like some like pretty dark and like semi realistic themes. So, the game takes place in sort of a faux. I believe it's it's like a nineteen eighties Britain, where um, a new political party that's I guess akin to like a socialist party takes over. So it's more of like they take away the rich. That like the rich actually pay their fair share, and they do a lot of other changes in the country. And you watch as like the country slowly descends into chaos over the over the time that you spend in the TV station. So that there's a lot of wacky, weird, cringy stuff that happens in the game that also gets mixed with like some pretty 
serious like themes of like politis politicization and and you know the idea of how you can actually run a government when you're trying to be fair to everybody but like the most important thing is again like you just having to go through the chaos of trying to make sure that you have make sure the cameras like they tell you try to make sure you're always focusing on who's speaking because you get four monitors so you got to try to stay with whoever's speaking you got to also not hold on it too long so it doesn't end up being you know too boring that it's holding on the same shot for too long so it is very much like as someone who worked i say worked i mostly interned but like worked in the industry and, and actually understanding like how to try to put together a half decent show and like it's honestly pretty well done in that regard and then the mixture of like really really bad like d-level movie like cheesy dialogue and like cringy storytelling is really really funny so I think they do a great job of like, like, for example, the scene that people are watching on YouTube is legitimately the cringiest thing ever because it's like what, you know, a political party, if they could put like a show about being friendly to people would be like, like the most like flowery language, like, oh, you can't be mean to people. And, and they end up starting like doing white people like rapping, like the really <laughs> corny rapping when you see like, you know, people rapping like about friendship or whatever. It's so bad. And the entire time I'm like, please just let me get out of this level. And then you look at the top of the screen. No, it's still five more minutes. Stop. But I think it does really good. And honestly, I, for, for the price tag that it is, I think the most that you can spend on it, if it's not on sale on Steam, is like 20-ish bucks Canadian. So it's actually a pretty decent price. And it's it's a good length of game. Like I'd say somewhere around the 10 to 15 hours because... The first tutorial level is really short. Like most of the segments were like two minutes. By the time you get towards the end of the game, it's almost like you're doing a full on new show. It's it's like a half an hour's worth of stuff that you're flipping between. So it gets really good. And it got really interesting by the end that I like, I couldn't stop. Like even though that so I had to turn down some of the controls because some of the stuff got too invasive because it was keeping me from focusing. But like, I think they did a great job in what they were selling it on. It's a really funny game that actually takes a little bit of like what television broadcasting is and making it into a game which honestly if like this is five nights without the horror aspect of it they actually did a pretty decent job of doing it cool I have a quick uh, question yeah go for it. when you changed cameras did you say out loud like camera one camera two camera one camera no three? but the voice was definitely in my ear of being in <laughs> a truck during an, an ahl hockey game and having to sit there on the switch and be like, camera one, ah, camera five, ah, and just constantly like hitting the button back and forth and getting all freaked out. If anybody watches a uh, WWE, you probably look at the way that, and you're pretty sure the switcher must have a heart attack with how many times they switch the cameras in that fucking show. So like, I can't, I cannot imagine like, even just being in the truck for a minor league hockey game, I cannot imagine what it must be like being the person that's in charge of the switchboard when you're doing like pro sports, like the NFL, it's gotta be psychotic in there with the yeah. amount of camera like i don't know how many angles like the nfl on an average game has but it's probably somewhere in like the 20s if not more because you're counting like all the overhead shots the friggin' um the boom cameras that have like the big platforms that they're friggin' going across the crowds on the ones that are hanging on the ropes the people on the ground all the fan shots you got to keep an eye on there's so much stuff and this one is literally four buttons and even that can be stressful sometimes. So I cannot imagine what it's like in a real studio because holy shit, I, I, I got off easy in college. I cannot imagine the real world. It would have been a nightmare. So Adam, where would you put this on the Pixel Play podcast rating? Uh, one being garbage, six being amazing and must play. Where does this fall? I'd say it's like a 3.5 to a four. Like it's definitely just above average where I think, like, it does okay. everything that it sets out to do. It's not spectacular. I'm not going to sit here and say, like, it may not sound like it's it's that bad because I'm not really saying anything bad about it, but, like, I would just say that it's it's not a game that's, like, going to wow you. It's just, it's just a really chill, like, calming thing. And unlike games like, say, Coffee Talk, where I got really into it, this was more of a sense of, like, I liked it, but I w I'm not going to sit here and go like, oh my God, this was the coolest thing I've played in a long time. Like this was just a really neat thing. And I have like my biases from being in television that like I, I have a bit of an extra thing of it. I think it's just a cool thing for those who like want to know what it's probably like in, in a TV studio. It's a very like bare bones way of seeing like what it is. And then on top of that, you get like a really shitty, cheesy D level movie. And it's really good for that. 
Are you able to watch the like the TV shows that you make afterwards? Yeah, actually, you say that at the end of every um, episode, they give you a screen where you can go back and watch all of the monitors so you can see anything that you miss because there's also stuff during the ad breaks that you wouldn't get to put on camera because it's just stuff in the background. So like one of the first things in the tutorial is when they interview like, you know, your classic, like really over the over the deep end, like egotistical, like celebrity. And he goes sh- like batshit crazy because he's mad that he didn't get his red M&Ms or, or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. And you don't get to hear all of it because you're you're busy hearing a different camera. And when that goes, you can see all of the angles and you can hear exactly what he said. And there's also an option where you can see literally what you produce. So it shows everything that you did, including angles that you fucked up, if you miss sensors, if you put in different ads. And... It- all the different elements that you chose to do. So you can actually see the episode as you produced it. So it is kind of neat in that regard too. Yeah. And there's a lot of endings too. Like Chrono Trigger is blushing on how many endings this thing has. Actually, I think Chrono Trigger has more (laughs) endings. I'm pretty (laughs) sure that there's like somewhere in the mid tens for this game. I'm 99% positive that the one that I got is the best ending because I felt like it was the one that kind of fit right in the middle with everything. Because there's a bunch of them where, like, one side clearly wins over over another. Whereas this one, I felt like, was, like, the best bridging of, like, yeah, everybody got their due in this. So I think I got what I consider to be the best ending, and it was really well put together by the end, too. But, yeah, there's actually a lot of different ways you can go, because not even just with the... Because uh, I didn't mention this before. There are a lot of decisions that you make during these episodes, because they're are certain tapes that you can play that you're told not to. There are certain things that you can censor that you are told to censor, but you can maybe let it go. Um, There are things that in between the actual television programming that there are just these quick, like choose your own adventure things. And those can actually change a couple of things. So like there, there is still an, an essence of like your choices have consequences kind of stuff too. And that's how I think I got to my ending because I kind of did the best that I could to make it, to make it balanced instead of uh, going one way or the other. I tried to make it so that I was trying to be as impartial as possible. So I guess I kind of took like the, the neutral ending, which I think was the best one personally. Cool. Awesome. Definitely sounds like a game worth checking out. Yeah. Um, yeah and I mean, I got it. I think gonna... I got it for like 40% off. So I got it for like just under 15 bucks. A game, and it was well worth that for sure. Nice. Nice. Um, cool. Uh, I'm, I also have a review this week, so I have a review for, uh, Tunic. Um, you've probably heard of this game. It's a game that is amazing with some flaws. So, uh, you've probably heard this game and people are talking about it. Basically, I would describe Tunic as a mixture of Link's Awakening, Dark Souls, and Fez. Now, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, you've played Tunic as well, right? Yes. Did you even okay. review it yeah, on so the show? Can... I don't, I'm not sure if I remember or not if you did. Chris doesn't review things on this show. Chris doesn't have not do reviewed. any of that. <laughs> and maybe we could do this. We'll do this one together. So we can, we can talk about it together if you want. Um, so I, I put the analogy that this is a Link's Awakening design and gameplay. It is, I would say the biggest inspiration here is a Legend of Zelda game uh, in the early 90s aspect. So you are a little fox that is brought to this island. Um, and gameplay mechanic wise, you explore the island you have to collect some items. But one of the hooks of this game is that you have a instruction manual um, like you would when you were, you know, five, six years old coming from back from the video game store. You'd get a little manual with your game. Uh, and because you can't read, you have no idea what the manual says. And it is just like that in this game. It has a made up language and you collect these sheets for this manual. And as you go, the manual will give you insight into what you can and cannot do. Uh, and sometimes it's interesting. There's stuff that you could do that you didn't even know was possible until you collect a piece of paper uh, from the manual. Now, this is both really cool in terms of like the homage to the old games. But for me, I felt that it was a problem as well. So you have to collect these sheets to figure out what you can do. But the game is also obtuse in terms of having this foreign language to learn to the point that I actually like missed key information. Like I ended up playing this game without ever once uh, upgrading my character. So there's a way to upgrade your health upgrade your magic and your your mana and i didn't even pick that up because one of the problems is that you can miss manual pages and even still when you get new manual pages it doesn't have a way of distinguishing what you've already seen and what you haven't seen yet Mm. so i one didn't catch on because i missed a, a particular picture that had that information and so i 
missed out on that. So this is going to kind of skew the, the review a little bit, but I think I can still talk about it. So I thought the manual idea was neat. I didn't like the fact that the pages were either you had to find them or that the pages were not clear in terms of what was new, what was old. Uh, and the fact that it wasn't in English, like I feel like all three of those just made it a little bit more obtuse than what it should have been. Chris, what was your thoughts on, on the manual and like how it was displayed? Oh yeah. It, I definitely had the same issue with the character upgrades. I did figure it out at one point, but I think it wasn't even me. I think I was on Reddit or something and just reading about the game and somebody was stuck. I read their comment. It was like, oh, have you done the character upgrades? It's on page whatever of the instruction manual. And I was like, wait, what? And I went back into the game uh, or next time I was playing it. And that's when I, I saw it. Uh, I, I don't remember now because I played it last year, like around when it released um hmm. on game pass at least i'm not sure if that's when its actual release was um but yeah i had the same issue it's it's weird because like you said it's like you love the idea because of the way it looks it's very nostalgic it's a new mechanic that's never been done in a game before but of course there is parts of it like there's some secrets in there that you can get which i was doing because of the achievements and uh like just upgrading your character, you think that's bad? There's some secrets where you have to like decipher one page, which gives you a hint where you go to another page and you end up figuring out like you have to go near this rock, this rock and go up twice, left once, down three times and turn around again. And then all of a sudden like this magic thing shows up. Like there's some some pretty crazy things that uh, that are in that instruction manual that there's no way I would have found without a guide. No way. Yeah. So it is it's, like I said, it's a great idea but maybe not perfect execution. And that's how I'd kind of describe um, Tunic in a nutshell. From a gameplay perspective, the gameplay is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, you basically have a sword, you have some items, and you have like magic abilities, and you kind of go through and collect uh, items as the game requires of you. From a gameplay perspective, I felt the combat was kind of limited. I often was just relying on my sword because I felt like it was really hard to get items. Like... Items were not given as freely as I would have hoped. And same with like magic abilities I felt were very like you. It was hard to refill your magic that I ended up just relying mostly on my sword and saving items only for when I needed them in like critical emergencies. But this comes to my next point. The game is very difficult. Uh, I ended up having to reduce the difficulty. And then ultimately I turned on what was basically God mode so that I couldn't die because I just wanted to finish the game. And we could talk about that in a second um from a boss perspective but i just felt that the game was hard and when you die you get brought back to sort of your bonfire for a lack of a better term this is where the souls aspect comes in but you lose all your items so i was disincentivized to use my items because it's not like legend of zelda where you can kind of find them by cutting through the grass or anything you pretty much have to find them in treasure chests which are limited or purchase them at very limited spread out shops so i i felt the combat was limited very difficult and once again, I'm biased in there because I wasn't upgrading my character because I didn't know how. Um, and then ju that's just general gameplay and mechanics. From a boss perspective, I felt the bosses were almost way too difficult in that, yeah, like the game is hard and you can reduce the difficulty a little bit, but they were almost unforgiving. And I don't know how... I played the game without God Mode until about the third last boss. So... Um, I played the final boss and I would have no idea how anyone beats that without God mode on because it's quite tough. Like what about you, Chris? What's your experience from a gameplay and combat perspective? I a hundred percent turned on God mode as well. Um, I can't remember which boss I was at. There was a very difficult one at the top of a tower, which I was yep. surprised I beat. I did beat normally, but it was also the first time I started using magic a lot because it was kind of required mm -hmm and the strategy to take that boss down. But it was once I was in this back mine area and you had to go down into a mine and stuff, I was in there and it was getting so difficult. Uh, I had to turn on God mode. I, I gave up um, for yeah. sure. Cause it is unforgiving. I would have never finished the game otherwise. No way. Yeah. And I, I'm the same way. So those are the same ones that I had. It was one at top of a tower, one in a mine pit, and then eventually the final boss, the final boss is, I don't know how anyone beats that without like, um, god mode turned on because yeah. it was just it was difficult um so like i didn't like the bosses i like the exploration aspect of this game like you kind of unlock shortcuts to get to other parts of the level and stuff and i thought that was really cool but the combat especially boss fights didn't appeal to me uh from a story perspective the story is a mess i don't even know what the hell's going on um once again this comes back to the fact that the 
manual is written in some hieroglyphics aspect that I have a general idea of you're rescuing some mouse or fox or something that's stuck in some prison, but I don't know the context of why. I don't really know who the big villain is. Like it's the story makes no sense and you're not playing this for the story. Chris, no. did you decipher the story better than I did? Not at all. I think everybody has their own interpretation. I think that's what the developer was kind of going for. It's kind of like, you know, a little bit like there, you're a little fox and there's either your friend, an elder, your mom. I don't know. It could be anything that this other mm -hmm. fox question mark character was, because I'm not yeah. even sure if it was a fox. My interpretation was it's like it's like your mom or a, a, a friend of yours or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And you're just rescuing them. Yeah. yeah other than so that, no, overall, no idea. <laughs> from, from a artistic design, I thought the soundtrack was amazing. Uh, the art style is absolutely amazing. So I liked it from that perspective, and I don't think anyone's going to really disagree with that. It's, like, charming and, and neat art design. So, like, uh, like Adam or, or Chris, like, do you disagree at all? No, I, I think that this game was, like, people who play it aren't doing it for the story, aren't doing it for, I mean, unless they really like the difficulty. I think most people are doing it for the exploration, the art style, and I guess possibly the soundtrack. I love the soundtrack. I played it on Spotify for like a month afterwards. Like I yeah. would just casually throw it on because it was so chill and so good. Um, but I think it's the the art style and the exploration type that oh, that's yeah, the you, reason yeah. that people you play this. One hundred percent tell that like a lot of people played this game or tried this game because they thought it was really cute and it reminded them of like old school Zelda games, and then probably played it and went, "Holy crap, this is kicking my ass!" Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So for me, I would say if you are a fan of Legend of Zelda games, if you are a fan of Dark Soul games and you like the puzzle and sort of navigation aspect, because like sometimes it's just a perspective puzzle that if you look at it from a different perspective, it changes it, which is where I kind of got the Fez uh, reference. If those kind of things appeal to you, this game is right up your alley. I would say it's a situation of amazing like ideas and okay execution i don't think everything worked i don't think it's a perfect game but i think the ideas that are here are really good worth checking out especially because it is on game pass i think i paid like 30 bucks for it on playstation i don't feel like that's a bad price but i think the game is not misleading but you could have a uh, misguided interpretation of what this game is like because i came in thinking it was going to be more of a legend of zelda and i was not expecting the difficulty um and convolutedness that came with the game so from Chris, I don't know if you want to add anything or if you want to like if I don't want to put words in your mouth in terms of what your overall thoughts are for this game. Oh, no, I, you're pretty much spot on. I wish that this game had like a tunic light that came out. Mm -hmm. It was like the same basic game, just with the difficulty down to a normal Legend of Zelda style difficulty, like where yeah. they took the Dark Souls out of it, basically, um, and just left the, the, the Fez and Legend of Zelda inspiration i think that would be great yeah. and then sure keep the manual but like make it a lot more obvious like yeah, so when like you find page 83 with, like the levels that you go to yeah mm -hmm. yeah because yeah you'd find a page and it related to something completely in a different area on another part of the map and normally you'd get a page and you wouldn't need it for like five hours of actual gameplay later and you'd mm -hmm. totally forget about it so also having caitlin like you said that quality of life improvement of showing what pages you've actually looked at would be killer. I never even thought of yeah. that, but it would have made a big difference. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I'm going to put this game at, I put it on our list at a, at a five. Uh, I definitely think this is a good game. If you are looking for that style of game, I wouldn't say that this game is for everyone, but if what I've been saying, if the games that I've been referencing are things that tickle, tickle an inch itch for you, this game is, is right up your alley, but I wouldn't say that this game's for everyone. It does some neat things. It just doesn't do it perfectly. So for me, I'm going to give it a five. What about you, Chris? Yeah, I'd go right in there too. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. And yeah, that's Tunic. Uh, definitely worth checking out. And that for us is our episode. Um, thank you so much for joining, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for hosting with me. If you want to see more of our podcast, we have a uh, podcast tons of episodes wherever you get your podcasts uh we are also on youtube if you want to see my very delayed and pixelated face this week you can go check it out on youtube uh we also have discords and instagram socials you can find us at linktree forward slash pixel play podcast linktree is linktr.ee forward slash 
Pixel Play Podcast. Uh, we'd love for you to join us and our other fans as we talk about everything that's going on in video games, random things, uh, anything that interests us. Gentlemen, any closing thoughts before we wrap up the show? I'm not ever going to read USA Today articles on the best of gaming ever again. That's, that was going to be my comment, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you guys next week. Bye for now.